St. David, the 7th century Welshman, who became the patron saint of Wales, was a delightfully humble man with no dramatic gifts, and he left us a simple rule for life. Do the little things. St. Teresa said something very similar. We can't do great things, but we can do little things with great love. These insights are very appropriate in this age of global communication, television, World Wide Web, huge auditorium churches, the age of mega everything. It's easy for an individual to feel diminished, insignificant, exactly how Satan would like us to feel. Thomas Akempis says this, for God weigheth more with how much love a man worketh than how much he doeth. He doeth much, but loveth much. In other words, the very fact that a person loves much adds enormously to the little thing they may do. A small work done with much love is greater than a grand work done with little love. Recall the woman who washed and anointed Jesus' feet. The forgiveness of her sins was linked to her showing great love to Jesus in the action. You find it in Luke chapter 7. Doing the small thing has the added advantage of helping prevent pride. You have to be humble to do the small thing. The qualifications for such a chosen career would be applicant must be humble or applicant must be prepared to go unnoticed. Humility and discretion are the desired qualifications. The person must be able to do the small thing without making the other feel uncomfortable. There's nothing worse than being somebody else's experiment in service. They are serving you and it's painfully obvious. This is where the doing of a small thing can be kinder than a big thing. It can avoid embarrassment. There's a beautiful example of one of these little acts of thoughtful kindness in 2 Kings chapter 4. The woman of Shunem wanted to serve the holy man of God, Elisha, and so she persuaded her husband to, quote, make a little chamber with walls and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a lampstand. And whenever he passed that way, Elisha had somewhere to rest. It was a little thing. A little thing done with great love, and the details are carefully recorded in the Bible. A small thing, and anonymity as far as possible, is the safest route. Then pride and indiscretion haven't got a chance. Maybe we should ask ourselves, if I knew that nobody would find out about this, would I still do it? If I can honestly answer in the affirmative, then I'm safe to go ahead. The dynamo behind our service must be love, not, for instance, anxious guilt. When a person is not serving cheerfully but with a long face and radiating an atmosphere of anxiety or self-righteousness, making the person they are serving feel uncomfortable, they are really serving themselves, to make themselves feel better, possibly to counteract that sense of guilt. Then the person being served becomes an object. guilt is dealt with at the cross in prayer, not in serving others. Love does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. We dishonour somebody when we objectify them, regarding them as an opportunity for personal ministry, and speaking of them to others is also dishonouring. Thomas Akempis hits the nail on the head. He says, Oftentimes, a work seemeth to be done in love, and it is rather the flesh, because our natural inclination, self-will, hope of reward, and desire of our own interest will seldom be far off. Uncomfortable words that we all need to take to heart. Whilst we're on the subject of doing small things, a healthy attitude to sharing the gospel and a genuine respect for the other prevents us from presuming we can do the mighty thing of changing their heart and mind. Only God can do that. It's a miracle and it's a great thing. Ours is the small thing. 
sharing the love of Jesus in words or action. In the words of Francis of Assisi, preach the gospel, sometimes use words. The little thing is in imitating the life and manners of Jesus, who was all humility and love, and always being prepared to share the gospel with respect and humility. Psalm 17 verse 15 says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. May God purify our motives and give us great love.